Hi, this is BK Hobby, and today I'm going to show you how to install one of these Aeon Labs energy readers, which are basically Z Wave devices that monitor the power input of either your main or sub electrical panel and transmit that information over Z Wave to your home automation system. In my case, I already have a consumption meter that monitors the overall house power draw as part of my solar system, but I had one of these laying around, so I decided I'm going to put it on my sub panel in the shed so I can monitor my sub panel for how much power it draws including things like my saws and my welder. So this is the unit came packaged in, packaged in this box. It basically comes with these, with these two split core current transformers. These pop open and go around the main power lines coming into the main breaker in your electrical panel. There's also this box which is basically the uh, input unit and the Z-Wave transmitter. So the transformers connect to the main unit using these connectors here inside the electrical panel. And I think you can leave this inside the electrical panel, but I, I'm going to take it outside. I don't want to interfere with the Z-Wave signal with it being set inside the electrical box. One of the problems I'm having with, with my Z-Wave light switch here in the shed is that it's pretty far away from the main controller in my house. and it constantly loses communication with the Z-Wave mesh network. So I'm hoping that adding this unit to the shed will expand my mesh and take care of those communication errors as an added bonus. Comes with a USB cable as well and the power supply and a couple of screws that allow you to mount the unit to a wall. First I'm going to mount this box. I'm going to mount it here close to the outlet that I'm going to be using for power and then close to the panel so I can run the CT wiring that way. So this snaps off and now I can mount just a hook for it. So measure it again, right near the middle, get my first hole marked up. And these are pretty good screws. All I need to do is use a screwdriver to put them in. I am kind of in a tough spot with this L box here, but I do want it out of the way. So I'm going to put up with that. Now I can attach this guy and attach the second screw. And now, just snaps on. Now comes the dangerous part because I have to work around the main main cables coming into the panel and you want to be really careful with that. You want to make sure that you don't touch any of the wiring especially these bus bars or the logs that connect the main wiring into the main breaker. In my case I'm working on a dead panel. This is a sub panel in my house so I'm able to turn off the supply breaker for this panel in my main electrical panel and I can be confident that I'm working on on the dead circuit here. But if you tackle this project yourself and you are working on your main electrical panel, be extremely careful working around these two main cables as well as anything else in, inside this panel. There's voltages here that can kill you and there's plenty of ways for you to get in touch with these voltages. So now that I've said that, I'm gonna take these CTs, unwrap them, tie them, and snap them and basically unsnap and wrap them around the cables here. Snap them back in and for now I'll just route this cable down through the panel. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And the way these current transformers work is they wrap around the main electrical feeds into the panel and as current flows through these two feeds on both of the AC phases that current generates a magnetic field and the voltage that flows down this wire, these two wires. The unit that these connect to measures that electrical voltage and based on the amount of voltage it can determine the amount of current that's flowing into the panel. And these are numbered. So this is number one and this is number two. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the other one around and route the cable through the panel. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to punch out a hole in the panel to feed the cables out to the measurement unit. I should be able to just push it through and get the blank out. And I have these plastic NM cable covers. I'm going to use this thing as a grommet basically so these wires aren't scraping against the uh, rough metal edges here. I did have to knock out the clips that hold on the NM cable because otherwise these things wouldn't fit through. So I take one and I'm going to take two and feed them through this plastic grommet. I also want to remember which is which or I want to make sure that I'm putting number two in the number two slot, number one in the number one slot. All right, so now both of these have to go through the hole I punched out in the panel. And 
snap the grommet in place and I'll just figure out the wiring here a little bit so it's not in the way of anything else. Now I'll take my number one and I'll hook it up to the first slot which is marked number one on the actual enclosure. Screw that in tightly. Take number two, put it in the second slot and I'll snap this back in place. I'll just pretty up the wiring a little bit, wrap around these excess wires and hide them out of the way. I am done in the panel so I'm going to lock it up. And now all that's left to, for me to do is to plug in this USB power supply and plug it into the USB port on this unit. Now it's time to turn it on and add it to my Z-Wave mesh network. Okay, now that, I've, now that I've turned it on, you see that the LED on the unit is blinking red, which means that it's not connected to the Z-Wave network. So I have to either bring my controller over here to get it included in the Z-Wave mesh or try to use network inclusion from OpenHab. So I tried using the network inclusion mode with my Aeon Z-Stick, but I think this device might be a little too old for that. I think network inclusion mode works with devices that are Z-Wave Plus compatible and this one is not. So I'm gonna have to do the old fashioned way. I put the Z-Stick into inclusion mode and then on the back of the unit here, and right now it's blinking red, on the back there's a arrow that says push here. It actually helps if you take the back cover off. And as you see, there's space for four A batteries here if I wanted to add them, but I'm using the USB cable for power. So this is the inclusion button right on the inside of the device. So again, I'm gonna go put the Z stick into inclusion mode. So it's blinking blue. And now, so when I press the inclusion button on the device, bam, Z stick started blinking and the LED on the device started blinking fast and it became solid. So that means that the device is now linked to my Z stick. So now I'll go, I'll go back inside and I should see a new thing in paper UI for my Z-Wave network. So after I've added my Z-Wave device to the Z-Wave mesh network and plugged my Z-Stick back into my OpenHab Raspberry Pi, when I go into Paper UI now, I see a new item in the inbox. And that's the Z-Wave DSB-09 Home Energy Meter. So I'll go ahead and add this thing to my configuration. So if I show a thing now, these are the channels that I have available from the meter, including power meter and kilowatt hours and watts, battery level, and all the readings broken out by phase. So now I can go ahead and set up the items for these channels and add them to my sitemap, hat panel, or build charts with the data. So I'll actually add these items to my solar.items file. Okay, so I went ahead and created the items for the channels that I'm interested in seeing, including an item for a reset switch to be able to reset the meter from my user interface. So I'll go ahead and hit save on these items that I've created. And now when I refresh the thing configuration here, you'll notice we have all the channels that I created the items for are linked. And when I go into control tab, I'm starting to see some numbers up updating from the switch. So, so right now it looks like the lights or other devices on that power panel are using a total of 50 watts. So I'll probably create charts from these values once I have more readings and see how much power some of the devices I'm I use in the shed are actually using. So I hope you found this video interesting and learned something from seeing me add a new Z-Wave device into an existing network and create the items for it. If so, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button for more videos about home automation and other OpenHab related things. And until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.